What you got up your sleeve then, Captain Stokes? They've been very much on the back foot and haven't really found a way of even gaining a bit of control. Stuart Broad is off the field. We've just seen Jack Leach off the field. And that's more runs. Duckett will stop the boundary. Ireland trail by just 28. Yeah, they've certainly been put under a lot of pressure. The most impressive thing, perhaps, has been the run rate, which McBrien and Adair have gone at this session. 6.54 so far. Well, England's still nine overs and one ball away from being able to claim the second new ball. Who's going to bowl it? Potts has put a bit of a stint in here. Broad at the moment is off the field. So perhaps it's handing it to Josh Tong. Oh, as he edged it through, he has. Can you believe it? He's played that shot so effectively in his innings. On this occasion, he has just feathered it through to Johnny Bairstow. Big relief for England and full marks for Matt Potts to keep charging in from that pavilion end. Well, it's the continued cross scene, short ball play. They possibly could. It was a brilliant partnership between Adair and McBride of 163, nearly at a runner ball. And full marks to Matthew Potts. He kept charging in, back breaking work, slamming the ball into a sluggish surface. Oh, he just got that over best. Oh, he'd have been into the 90s, Owen, and a couple of hits away from 100 at Lords. Yeah, joy for Potts. To spare for Adair. Played really, really well. Oh, Mark Adair will be very proud how he's played and presented himself this week, certainly with the bat more so than the ball. To spare for Adair, you're a poet and you didn't know it. I think that was from Heidi High or something ridiculous <laughs> like that, wasn't it? So Jack Leach off the field, Joe Root into the attack. Oh, Joseph Root! Don't mind this as a tactic either, trying to turn the ball away from McBride. He really dealt with Jack Leach with supreme confidence. innings dismissed by Matt Potts Oh, 
how important do you think that partnership was in just lifting the dressing room a bit after what has been a very torrid couple of days at times? Yeah, I think it's been huge for Irish cricket. Big platform this week. Very good. A huge opportunity to play against this strong England test team. I think they'll walk away with some positives to take from it. Certainly the partnership between Tector and Tucker. Oh! Joseph, look at this and then followed by McBride and Adair. Not only the method that they used, how they played and the control that they played with. Three hundred and twenty seven for seven, Ireland trail by twenty five. About forty minutes to the tea break. Ireland trail by twenty five. That partnership of hundred and sixty three has been broken. England are eight overs away from claiming the second new ball. Thirsty work. Ooh. This is good from Potts. Not much to work with. Ball's old. Sun's out. Surface is pretty flat. He's charged in. Given his all. Lost control of the bat then, Fionn had. His hand came off it. Very good. Very good from Potts. It's an interesting point you were just making off microphone there about whether they push the tea break back should one more wicket fall. They normally wait if it's nine down. They would do that. But of course, Arna would only be eight down. But you have to make the assumption, pretty much been told, that James McCollum will not bat. Realistically, in the two wickets away from victory, and one wicket away from maybe extending the tea break. Interesting how the umpires have judged that. Well, he's played that quite beautifully. I was a bit harsh on him a little earlier. I felt he was a bit outside edge. You quite rightly made the point that there was a sense of deliberation about that. That was fantastic. Very skillful. All the time in the world, seemingly to play this. Not an easy shot at all. Shake it ahead from Potts. He can't believe it. Good batting. Clever batting, skillful batting, brave batting with two slips in place. 332 for 7. And he has got the ball. Not the new ball. The one that's 73 overs old. Root out of the attack. Tong into the attack. 4 for 56 from 15 overs. Stokes has given him three slips.
even with an old ball, such as his height and strength, he's got that one to bounce nicely. Just thinking he's built like a old school fast bowler, isn't he, Josh Tom? Ooh, that was very close to being pad first. Nodded ahead, pure hand. Okay, that he's played it well, but this is a beauty. Just coming back in, targeting the stumps, looking for that fiver. Shop window for Fionn Hand. Any bat sponsors out there? Absolutely. Either that or Steve Waugh is his hero. Or Angus Fraser. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Angus Fraser, I think, used to sign his own bat with a pen. There he is, Gus. Had a good lunch. He kept writing messages to Richie Benno, didn't he, on the back of his bat for a while and kept getting told off. <laughs> Morning, Richie, and all this sort of stuff. Hugely instrumental figure, Middlesex County Cricket Club for a long time. Oh. Three, three, three for seven. The character of the Ireland side has really shone through today after a difficult couple of days here at Lords. They have made England work incredibly hard for this Test match victory, and it's not done yet. Three, three, three for seven trailing only by 19 so a chance to get England batting again and take one or two wickets with them before the game is done Mark Adair was on course for the fastest hundred here at Lords until he fell and Andy McBride is 76 off just 94 balls so between them they played excellently and he's given this Irish dressing room, a real lift on the third day. Yeah, Stokes not interested. There were three things going on there. First of all, the LB, then maybe a catch if there was an inside edge, and then the throw from Ollie Pope. I think he did uh, Colin de Grandon like that in the test match here last year. It's Brooke with the throw. It's Pope last year. Put the run out of Colin de Grandon. No! No! 
What did you reckon? A little high. It was uh, above the knee roll, wasn't it, on the flap of the pad? Yeah, I reckon a little high. Nice, though. Just nip back. I think Potts has bowled pretty well in this test match. He hasn't got the wickets that some others have, but I think he's bowled pretty well. Simon Dewell was making the point yesterday. I was asking him about his impressions of Potts and likes him a lot, thinks he's a good, strong bowler, real workhorse type of bowler, but he's going to obviously come into his own as Broad and Anderson slip away and out of the picture whenever that may be. Three, three, three for seven. 